Hello and welcome to Jurisage Academy's YouTube channel. Today we will talk about how to start constitutional law for CLAT PG 2025. If you are somebody who is going to appear for this exam, you need to have a very good grasp on constitutional law because this is one of the most frequently asked and constitutes as a huge portion of this exam. So you need to know how to be starting with this and how to cover it efficiently. Before we start with the video, we have a scholarship test on 7th February. It is entirely free and you can earn up to 100% scholarship on a CLAT PG 2025 course. So if you're interested, do check out and register for this test and take it on 7th February. Now coming to the topic that is constitutional law and its importance for CLAT PG exam. So you guys might be aware that constitution along with a couple of other subjects form the core of almost all LM entrance exams in India. Particularly for CLAT PG, there will be around 25 to 30 questions every year in the paper related directly to the constitution and there can also be some 5 to 10 indirect questions uh, for example if they're asking you questions on labor law it's a passage on labor law it may have one or two questions which are related to constitution as well so you can expect anywhere between 40 to 50 questions regarding constitution either directly or indirectly in that pg paper so you can see that 40 to 50 questions is a huge percentage out of 120 questions and you cannot afford to miss this subject. You need to have a good, good grasp on constitutional law if you want to ace CLAT PG. Not just CLAT PG but any LLM entrance exam in India. Now let's see that where to start, what to focus in constitutional law. So the most important thing is your Bear Act. For conceptual clarity, the first thing that you should refer to is the Bear Act thoroughly because Bear Act is your God. And you need to be aware of all the important things in the Bear Act, especially areas which are important, which I'm going to cover later in the video. The next thing which you will not find in the Bear Act is landmark cases. So you need to be aware what are the landmark cases related to a particular topic, what is their chronology, why did they happen, what happened after that. So basically, good knowledge of landmark cases because CLAT has also started testing, you know, they have started taking passages out of landmark judgments also. So it is very important that you have a good grasp of them as well. You can read these landmark cases from any book that you're referring. So for example, if you're referring to a LLM guide or if you have any notes, either of your own or of a coaching, then do refer these for understanding the landmark judgments. The third thing is important amendments. Now this is something which you can easily cover from the Bear Act itself, but be mindful of this. Be mindful of when an amendment came. What was it a result of? For example, if there's a landmark judgment because of which an amendment came, you need to be aware of that chronology as well. So these are the three things which you have to focus on because these are the three areas from which questions will be asked in your CLAT exam. Now let's take a look at the sources, what you can refer to. First goes without saying is your Bear Act. There's no substitute to Bear Act. And instead of reading random books which explain the Bear Act, focus on the Bear Act itself. Read the Bear Act only to understand and interpret. Second is you will definitely need some additional material because things like uh, landmark judgments or recent judgments or some theories or doctrines, they're not given in the Bear Act. So to cover these, you need to refer to either a LLM guide. There are a couple of LLM guides in the market which are quite good. Or you can refer to either your own notes if you've prepared in your college days or if you have subscribed to a coaching or any other institution. So if you have notes from their uh, material, then you can refer to that as well. Third thing is, do not read commentaries. Commentaries are not helpful for CLAT PG exam. They are bulky and they will not necessarily help you in cracking CLAT PG. They will definitely enhance your knowledge, no doubt about that. But you have to prepare according to the needs of the exam. And this exam requires you to have a good understanding of the Bear Act and landmark and recent cases. So try to avoid commentaries. Instead, refer a LLM guide or some notes. Now, having said that, I will tell you a list of some important topics which you have to absolutely cover for CAT PG exam. Now, apart from that also, there could be some areas, but the possibility of them being asked are very low. So we have included only the most important ones. So the first one is preamble and the amendments that have happened to the preamble. Second will be what is the meaning of the terms which are included in the preamble. Third will be power of amendment, which is related to this only. So you will have to know about Article 368 and all the amendments that came, all the judgments that came under Article 368. Then we move to citizenship. Citizenship as a chapter is not very important, but you need to know uh, what are the ways in which a person can acquire citizenship in India. <clears throat> what is the power of the parliament under Article 11? Okay, so citizenship is not a very important part. 
Next is fundamental rights. Fundamental rights is the most important portion and you need to have a very good in-depth understanding of it. DPSPs and fundamental duties are not that important. They sometimes ask article numbers and they ask, for example, they may ask you a question on uh, under which article is maternity leave given. So DPSPs and fundamental duties have to be memorized. Next is executive. When we come to executive, you have to cover it at the union level at, as well as the state level. So you need to know about the offices of the president, vice president, governor, role of council of ministers. So all of this has to be covered. Next is judiciary. In judiciary, you need to have good understanding of the high courts and the supreme court, their jurisdiction and their powers. Next is legislature. Now again, this is very bulky, but you need to be aware of very important things like what is the composition? How can members be removed or suspended? What are parliamentary privileges? What is anti-defection law? Then comes legislative procedure in which you should know how laws are made. What is, what are the, what is the difference between money bill and ordinary bill and how are they made into laws? Next important thing will be ordinance making power of the governor and the president. Next will be administration of union territory, particularly NCD Delhi. So article 239 AA is most important. Then you have distribution of legislative power and the seventh schedule and last is types of emergency. So Mota Mota, you have to cover these topics particularly with strong emphasis because these are the most important ones in constitutional law. So this is how you can prepare for constitutional law. Hopefully this, these tips will come in handy if you're preparing for any other exam as well where constitutional law is one of the important parts. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comment section. If you like this video, please like and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.